So let's talk about some of the types of street art that we see, because of course, when you have a very democratic form, such as street art, it's going to take on a lot of different ideas, a lot of different forms in and of itself. So let's look at some of the most common. Now, quote unquote, traditional street art would be, of course, painting on the surface of public or private property that is visible to the public, commonly with a can of spray paint or roll on paint. And it may be comprised of just simple words, commonly the writer's name, or it could be more artful and elaborate covering a surface with a mural image. It could even become a street art video. So we're seeing street art animation where people are painting the form and moving the form using stop action uh, with cameras. It's really quite remarkable if you get to see it. So this is really what we're thinking of when we think of street art, this traditional form. But there are other forms, and other forms are arguably becoming more famous. For example, there is stencil. So this is painting with the use of a homemade stencil, usually a paper or cardboard cutout to create an image that can be easily reproduced. Now, if you're going to use a stencil, there are a couple of rules. Number one, Use spray adhesive on as flat a surface as possible. That will get you the best possible result. Two, you can put spray adhesive on a piece before you take it to the site. You cover the spray adhesive with something like wax paper, makes life a lot easier. Three, test your stencils and practice the actual movements of hanging it and spraying it before you get on site. Always useful things, things that the university loves when I teach people. The desired design is cut out of a selected medium, oftentimes very light, flexible cardboard or uh, something like a manila envelope or a heavy card stock is really useful. The image will be transferred to a surface through spray paint or some kind of roll on paint. Here we have one example being laid out and worked on. The idea here is you practice everything. You lay out everything so that you're only on site for a few seconds. But with a stencil, I can create something far more elaborate than I could if, for example, I was freehanding a design. Then, of course, we have sticker. Uh, so this is also known as sticker bombing, slap tagging, and sticker tagging. And this is propagating an image or message in public spaces using usually homemade stickers. These stickers commonly promote a political agenda, comment on a policy or issue, or comprise an avant-garde art campaign. And the idea behind them is they're incredibly fast. All I have to do is take them out of my pocket and slap it up on a pole or something, and suddenly my message gets out. They're very common in urban environments. Sticker art is considered a subcategory of postmodern art. Of course, all of this is really, at the end of the day, a subcategory of postmodern art. Then we have video projection, which is pretty awesome. You'd want to look it up on YouTube, three-dimensional video projection. These are digitally projecting uh, computer-manipulated images onto the surface via a light or projection system. Some of them actually make it appear as if the building is being torn down and rebuilt or altered with light. It's really remarkable stuff, and it's all thanks to 3D graphics and some of the more advanced computing that we're seeing in today's day and age. We also see street installation. This is installation art on the street. And this is a growing trend within the street art movement. Whereas conventional street art and graffiti is done on surfaces or walls, street installations use 3D objects and space to interfere with the urban environment. Like graffiti, it is non-permission based. And once the object or sculpture is installed, it is left there by the artist. The expectation being that the piece may well be removed at any given time. Then we have wood blocking. Now, in this case, this is artwork attached or painted on a small portion of plywood or similar inexpensive material and attached to a street sign, usually with bolts. 
Often the bolts are bent at the back to prevent their removal, and this has become a form of graffiti used to cover a sign, poster, or any other piece of advertisement that stands or hangs. This is really common in certain urban environments, and this is a very problematic form because when they take this piece and they bolt it up, first of all, you have to drill through whatever you're uh, mounting this to. But then when you put the bolt through and bend it, if I want to remove it, I only have two options, one of which is to remove the pole or whatever you've attached it to, which might be the point in some cases. But my other option is to try and bend that bolt back, which probably won't work real well. So this one borders in terms of vandalism, graffiti, at least in my mind, uh, whether or not it is or isn't vandalism. I guess it depends on the circumstance. And again, just like everything else, it's a case-by-case -case basis. We also have flash mobbing. This was much more popular about five or ten years ago. Where a large group of people assemble suddenly in a public place, perform an unusual action for a brief time, then quickly disperse. The term flash mob is generally applied only to gatherings organized via social networking. The term is generally not applied to events organized by public relations firms or as publicity stunts. Those are mass public performance art or, well, advertising art. Finally, we have yarn bombing. Yarn bombing is a type of street art that employs colorful displays of knitted or crocheted cloth rather than paint or chalk. The practice is believed to have originated in the United States, with Texas knitters trying to find a creative way to use their leftover and unfinished knitting projects, but has since spread nationwide. In fact, it has become the harbinger of any art festival coming to any town anywhere in the world. And it is kind of fun for the first few days, but it loses its appeal over time. While other forms of graffiti may be expressive, decorative, territorial, or socio-political, they could be advertising or vandalism, yarn bombing is almost exclusively about beautification and creativity. So there's no larger message to yarn bombing. It's just, hey, let's uh, decorate this space. Not my favorite form, but it is an increasingly common form.